For 125 years, the Chelsea Sugar Refinery has been a landmark on Auckland's Waitemata Harbour. And Chelsea Sugar products have been a staple feature of New Zealand's kitchens for all that time. Chelsea, New Zealand's trusted taste since 1884. In 1882, New Zealand's population consisted of about 200,000 European settlers and 40,000 Māori and was growing rapidly. Cities were growing and towns were being started all over the country. The government of the day wanted to reduce our dependence on getting refined sugar from Australia, so decided to award a monopoly to any company willing to set up a sugar refinery. This bounty was picked up by the Colonial Sugar Refining Company of Australia, which formed a partnership with the Victoria Sugar Company and local New Zealand businessmen. Their chairman, Edward Knox, checked out Dunedin, Christchurch and Wellington for future sites and settled on Birkenhead because of the excellent water supply from Duck Creek and proximity to deep water so ships could come right alongside the site to be unloaded. They purchased 160 acres and began building in March 1883. The first raw sugar shipment arrived from Indonesia on the 17th of April 1884 and the factory began processing on the 1st of September 1884. The first customs officer on the site, Mr Judd, who had recently arrived from London, renamed Duck Creek after his home suburb, Chelsea. The surrounding area was levelled, with 120,000 cubic metres of clay dug out of the ridge, which was used to fill in a lagoon and to make one million bricks to build the factory. Another half million bricks were used to create number one and number two dams on Duck Creek. Dam three followed in 1910 and Dam four in 1917. There was a small hillock where the current offices stand, and until 1960 this was progressively dug into to provide fill as the site was developed. Many of the 150 workers building the factory and the dams lived in a shanty town comprising 60 tents and rough shacks with dirt walls and floors facing the cold southwest winds. However, before the factory opened in September 1884, the company built Chelsea Village in Colonial Road. The village comprised 35 wooden cottages, a school, a church, a store, a cookhouse and a library. By 1886, Chelsea Village housed 189 people. At the time, only 334 lived in the whole of Birkenhead. Unfortunately, the houses were cold and damp and were condemned in 1905. The St Peter's Church was pulled by a team of horses to Verin's Corner. In 1909, the company built the existing four duplex houses for chemists and engineers who were required to be on call every night. To assist their workers, the company provided 25-year loans. 130 houses were built under this scheme, with payments being deducted from the workers' wages every week. The company was very much part of the local community, with the ash sold to the local council for the early roads. When there was a threat of bubonic plague in 1902, the council offered three cents per rat to be incinerated in the furnace. For many years, the output of the factory was 150 tonnes a week or 7,500 tonnes a year. The factory whistle would blow at 5.30am loud enough to ring around Birkenhead and wake up the workers to warn them of the 6am start. At first, the working week was 60 to 70 hours. By 1901, that had dropped to 58 hours per week or six days and the weekly pay was $4.20. In 1920, there was a pay rise from $7.40 a week to $9.40 and a reduction in hours to 44 a week. Boys under 17 had their weekly pay raised to $3.25. The factory was noisy, hot, dusty and sometimes wet with temperatures in the 40 degrees Celsius. The young boys in the washroom who spent all day stamping the dirt from the filter bags resorted to working naked most of the time. Most jobs involved a lot of physical work, so workers wore as little as possible and bare feet were common. After work, it was much easier to wash down a bare body than lots of clothes in the days before washing machines and clothes dryers. Anyone who went outside for some respite from the heat, noise and dust was sacked on the spot. Health and safety practices and the issue of protective clothing were virtually unknown in manufacturing sites at that time. 
The 1930s depression didn't hit Chelsea as hard as some industries because it was seen as essential. Those who had housing loans had their jobs guaranteed by the company. However, some single and newly married men had to work week on, week off for a time. During the Second World War, 1939 to 1945, Chelsea was considered so important that a special defence block was set up for 40 Home Guard volunteers. Women were employed for the first time to replace men sent off to war, working in the office and the golden syrup room.